Okay, I'd like to tell you about one application to Faraday's Law called motional EMF. And that's when you have, um, in a magnetic field, if you put um, a metal piece shaped like this, and um, then you on, on top of it, you put a, a slidable bar. This is metal also, and it slides. It's kind of like a trombone. And so here is your loop. And that's what's going to have a changing magnetic flux through it. So if you pull this at, say, a constant speed V, so I'm going to pull this way with a constant speed V, uh, then what happens is I will induce some current in this loop. And so um, let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so for this situation, when, when I'm pulling with a, a speed V, let's say the length, uh, this length is L, and the length that's going to be changing the width of this thing it will call s and um, the magnetic field is into the page and so as this bar goes that way what's happening is we're gaining x's we're gaining more magnetic flux but it, we're gaining x's so it's going to try and produce dots using Lenz's law it will try and produce dots to stop those x's from gaining and so to produce dots it's going to have a current that flows this way And um, I'm going to say that there's some resistance in here. Um, it may be that the resistance is in one resistor called R, or maybe the whole thing has a certain amount of resistance, but let's just say that that's your resistor R. Okay, so there's a whole slew of questions that get asked on a question like this. And so um, first let's, let me show you how you find the EMF that gets induced. Then, So the EMF that will be induced using using Faraday's law is just going to be um, negative n d phi dt. So um, it turns out that the amount of loops we have is just one. So that's just that n is just going to be one. And um, the flux, let's just get an expression for flux right now. So I'm going to come over here and the flux, our expression for magnetic flux, is going to be the integral of b dot dA. So it's b dot dA. Now the dA's we're referring to are these dA's. There are a whole bunch of them. And let's say they're going, the dA is pointing um, normal to this surface and so it's going pointing the same way as the as the magnetic field. Well because b and dA are pointing the same direction we can get to rid of the dot product because the dot product what it's telling you to do is take the part of B that's in the direction of dA and multiply it by dA. Well, all of it is in the direction of dA. And so I go right to this. Now B, uh, remember I can pull this B out of this integral if it's uniform. And so B is uniform. B is um, not changing. And so um, because of that, um, I'm going to pull that out. And now when I add up all the DAs, when I go ahead and add up all these DAs, that's just going to be B times, um, the, it's going to be the total area of this, so it would be L times S. So that's the flux. Alright, so that's what I'm going to put in here. So the E is going to be, um, N is 1, so I'll put it, it's going to be negative the derivative with respect to time of the flux. Now the flux is then B L S. Well, is the B changing with time? No. I can pull it out of the derivative. Is the L changing with time? No. I mean, we can pull it out of the inner, out of the derivative. Uh, but you know what? The S is changing with time, so I can't pull that out. So this is going to turn into negative B. L times the derivative of S with respect to time. Now the derivative of S with respect to time is the velocity of this bar. So dS dt is the velocity of the bar. And so um, I'm just going to change that to negative BLV. You got to believe. Believe. You know, BLV. That's the emotional EMF you get from there. Okay? So that, that's actually going to be an equation that will get used a whole bunch whenever you have emotional EMF problems. 
Okay, so uh, now if I want to know how much current is in there then, then I would just use Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is, um, if I want to know the current that's induced, it will be the EMF induced divided by R. So it's going to be negative BLV divided by R. Okay. Now, are we really using that negative? No, we use Lenz's law to figure out the direction of the current. So it's BLV over R. Okay. Now, how much power is being used? Well, the power um, that's being used then, the amount of me mechanical energy that's being converted into, into um, electrical energy, the rate at which that's being done is power. And so the rate at which electrical energy, excuse me, mechanical energy gets turned into electrical energy is going to be I squared R. Or PIV. Okay, so if I put that in there, that's going to be um, BLV, B squared, L squared, V squared, all over R squared times R. So it turns out that the power is going to be equal to b squared l squared v squared over r. Okay, so that's just something that you can derive. Now I'd like to show you something else about this. In order to pull this at a constant speed, uh, that's gonna, there's going to be a force pulling back. And let me explain why there is. To pull this this way, if I have a current flowing up, then the um, then that current, if you use the right hand rule, there's a current flowing up, and the B is into the page. Isn't there going to be a force in that wire to the right? There will be. There'll be a force, a magnetic force, filled to the right. So if a current is heading up, like we said it was, then you're going to put your thumb in the direction of the current. Your fingers are in the field. And so that gets pushed to the left. So to pull this at a constant speed, I have to match that force. So how much force am I going to need? Well, I'll tell you how much force I'm going to need. The force I'm going to have to use to pull that at a constant speed, the force that I'm going to have to use is going to be equal to I times L cross B. Now, um, L is already perpendicular to B. And the I, we've just derived. So the I is BLV all over R times um, the length of the wire, L, times B. So that force that I'm using is going to be um, B squared, L squared, times V all over R. Okay, now, um, do you remember how power... The power that I would use is when I when I apply a force. The power is um, the work done per time, the work done per time. But how work was force times distance. I know I'm simplifying this a lot, but if work is force times distance over time, then this d over t is like a v. So power is also instantaneous power is the instantaneous force being used times V. And so um, the power that I'm using is going to be the force times V. So it's going to be B squared L squared V all over R, that's the force, times V. And so if you look, we're going to get B L squared V squared, B squared L squared V squared all over R. That's the power I'm applying when I'm pulling this at a constant speed. And let's go back to when I use the power that the resistor is, the power of the resistor, how much thermal energy, how much um, electrical energy is being converted to thermal energy is this. That's not a coincidence. Those are equal. B squared L squared V squared over R. B squared L squared V squared over R. Okay, so that's emotional EMF. Thanks for listening. Bye.